the dominant issues uh, are those related to, and not I said national issues, right? Those mm -hmm. related to water, those related to the general road infrastructure throughout the country, issues related to job creation, and also matters related to cost of living and uh, social security payments, as well as from uh, certainly from March, from the time the issue with the uh, the, the, the fuel came, became a matter of public interest. Mm -hmm. You know, people feel it, uh, sp specifically uh, the rise in fuel prices. And if you look at it critically, uh, the most common factor has to do with economic issues, cost of living, issues related to people being paid on time, job creation, fuel. And when you look at the issue of fuel and so forth, that, that, that has been listed fairly regularly, mm -hmm. right? And social security payments. They all tie in some way to cost of living. In particular, uh, in three of the constituencies, um, the whole idea of increase in salaries or wages was mentioned in very statistically high um, responses, um, above 17% above of respondents. Mm -hmm. So it shows you that economic issues are particularly dominant. May I ask right? which constituencies and, were those? Sure. Uh, St. John's Rural North, St. George, and St. John's City East. Okay. All right. Fair enough. These w Would you consider those considerations to be uh, the top considerations or just statistically significant? Because they're two different... Statistically things. significant, but not okay. the top. Okay. All right. So, okay. for example, uh, in most of the constituencies at the national level in terms of concern, uh, water would have been clear cut, followed by either cost of living or job creation, mm -hmm. depending upon the, the, the constituency in question. Okay. But I could tell you this, for, for those which I mentioned, right. issues related to regular supply of water, the uh, development of the road networks in the, throughout the country, uh, job creation, the issues related to social security payments and cost of living in well social security payments apart in which uh in three of those cases you have above 10 percent uh of the persons indicating that to be a response all the other responses are uh, easily above uh 10 percent and i'd say in the vast majority of cases easily above 17 percent i must ask you before right. we before we go, go any further sure. i noticed that among the issues you've highlighted as issues of main concern vaccination appears to be nowhere, or at least appears to be nowhere. Well, Did it feature in any of your results in terms of people are still upset about the mandate? It was not statistically significant enough to make a dent in this year. Last year, mm. for the exercises were done in the last quarter of last year, okay. it had some appeal or, or some concern for some of the, of, of the people in the population, but not one that I would say merit a uh, uh, that it be given that kind of prominence from a statistical point of view. Okay, so water, economic issues, more important. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so, so for me, the the, mm -hmm. the national issues mm -hmm. appear to be driven by economic issues on one hand, and the other, public service delivery issues. Right. What is what I find particularly interesting, though, is this: uh, in many cases, healthcare as a national issue is very small. So too is education. Mm. People list them, but it is, not, it is not among their top three concerns. However, in St. Mary South, for example, and in St. John's City East, they are well above 10% of the concerns of people there. But in some of the constituencies themselves, at the local issue, we see that healthcare becomes a very concerning matter. Mm. right? And that is the case, for example, again in St. Um, St. Mary South, and for example, in St. John's Road North. What, what what do you think so, 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 connects so, those two constituencies uh, as far as this right. issue is concerned? I find that interesting. Repeat that. What what connects? Because I mean, this they appear the, the constituencies are disparate. Rural North and and where you said um, Saint Mary mm -hmm. South. Saint Mary South. Yeah, mm -hmm. very different constituencies. Um, what do you think connects them to this particular issue? I wish I could say I know precisely. Uh, <laughs> okay. one, one thing I would say, though, is that um, the local issues are not necessarily 
um, deadlock or, or lockstep with the national issues in, 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 in a number of cases. In some cases, they are. Mm -hmm. um, what I was surprised about is the case of St. John's Rural North, in particular because it is one in which, by and large, you have uh, a, a, a population, mm -hmm. significantly high number of the population. Okay, I think we've lost Lindy. I think we've lost Lindy. There's a connection. There must be a connection issue somewhere along the line. So let's hope that we are able to resolve that. Uh, Mr. Mr. Technical Director, I, we, we've lost Mr. Winter. Um, we, I'm not hearing him at all. I'm not sure if he's hearing me, but we'll try and see if we can resolve that issue. If push comes to shove, we will have to call him. And they're uh, using the good old fashioned the telephone. And so forth. Oh, Lindley, and Lindley, we yeah. lost you. We lost you for about a minute. Okay. Yeah. So I'm so sorry. Right. You said that That's you. Cool. Yeah. If you could just repeat saying, what you were saying. The, the St. John's Rural North is curious from the point of view that uh, its, uh, its socioeconomic profile suggests that that is an area where you have a very high number of persons uh, who uh, you'd think would be in the better economic bracket. <clears throat> but the fact that you have health care as a concern among the population who who who, who are sampled mm -hmm. um may be in some way uh making a lie of the perception that you have generally speaking uh a, a lot of persons there the vast majority of persons there who can really afford private health care apart from public health care and so it ought not to be as uh concerning mm -hmm. for for those people there but in this case at the local level it sure is um something that people have as a concern and, and i can say specifically uh that in some of the areas where it's considered to be middle income parts of that constituency this was a, a, a an issue of note yeah perhaps because they recognize private health care will maybe move them from middle income to, <laughs> to lower well affect their, their, their economic circumstances substantially mm -hmm. um all right let, let, let me try to um zero in now on the political parties and the impact that these issues in the minds of voters have on their perceptions of the main well all the political parties because we have three parties as far as i know that we consider to be in in contention that would be the um antigua Barbu right. labor party the incumbent the united progressive party the main opposition and then the Democratic National Alliance. Uh, some folks might take exception to me including them, but there are legitimate political um, parties. They're on the list. They're, they're on the list. That's correct. So what, what uh, can you give us some insights into the impact that these uh, your results have shown on the voters' perceptions of these parties, please? All right. First of all, I want to make this very clear. Mm -hmm. Um these exercises began in January, and the latest one that uh, I would have completed would have been in May. So that, that is a great time span. The best cluster would have been in March, in which uh, one, two, three, four constituencies were done in March. Mm -hmm. All right? So I'm not going to say to anyone that this is a reflection of things as is full stop, because, you know, time affords for there to be variability. Yes. But you can take it for what it's worth given the time factor in mind, and consider for yourselves if the conditions, economic, social, political, and so forth, have changed radically mm -hmm. to result in there being uh, a consistency in those outcomes or a shift away from those outcomes. So that's, that, that, that's an important thing, I think, that needs to be mentioned. Okay, understood. You follow me? Yes, I, I think so. Yes, I think right? so. Mm. Now, now, that said, in your reference to the contending parties, yes. as yet there is no indication that the DNA in the areas in which these exercises were done will be a factor. So, so far, from what I've gleaned, we're looking by and large the two-way fight okay. between the incumbent, Antigua Labour Party, or Antigua Barbuda Labour Party, and the main opposition, the United Progressive Party. Hmm. Now, in all of those studies, what is observed, two things, broadly speaking. One, that the Antigua Labour Party, or Antigua Barbuda Labour Party, has lost quite some degree of support compared to the share of support it got in the 2018 elections. 
Okay. So, for example, um, in one instance, they'd lost uh, about 22% support from the sample that was taken. This is in St. Mary's South. In St. George, their support is about 24% less. In uh, St. Mary's North, it's about 23% less. In all of these, except for one, there is an evidence swing of 10% or more mm -hmm. in terms of uh, the, the, the outcome, right? It suggests that the opposition party is making some headway. Okay. Now, will this carry through to actual election date? Your guess is as good as mine. And what the parties do to persuade the voters will be a clear, well, a, 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 an important determination as far as how they're able to maintain or overtake their rivals in that regard, right? Okay. At present, in one constituency, there is a tie. All right? I'm in another... Ask, you know, I'm going to ask you the, which one that is. Which, which constituency Of course, I know that? you're going to ask, and you have every right to ask. Yes. So, in another... Mm -hmm. The Antigua Labour Party is just outside of five points ahead of the it, it, the, 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 the the candidate who is challenging its candidate. But in all of the others, mm -hmm. so far, at least from those exercises exercises which are done, the UPP is apparently in the ascendancy. Okay, so there's right, a, so so there's a swing. A, a, a perceptible swing toward the United Progressive Party in your analysis. There is. Okay. Correct. Uh, all right. And again, this is not a national exercise. Mm -hmm. and this is only based upon seven exercises, and again, not within one time cluster. For me, ideally, this would be done in around the same time period. Mm -hmm. But then the people who are behind these activities, they know how their own finances go, and that is another factor influencing how and when these, well, in particular, when these things are done. Okay. May I ask you, which is the constituency of the Thai? You didn't answer. Sure, you may. Yes. Right? Yeah. Sure, you may. Bear and that's not, my response. But you're not telling me, Mr. Winter. Mr. Winter yeah, yeah, I mean, you're saying that I should, may I ask, and you expect I, me to I, ask. Well, why you can't tell me? That's what listeners want to know, I'm yeah. sure. Which is what, the constituency, you, which um, is the constituency is that there is a Thai? This. Yes. Eh? Mm-hmm. Um, the UPP is ahead in St. Mary's South, in All Saints West, mm -hmm. in St. George, in St. Mary's North, and in St. John City East. Okay. In all of those cases, the swing is 10% or more. Okay. All right. Um, what swing is required for the seat to change hands? Because it's one thing to have a swing, but it's another thing to have a swing that is sufficient mm -hmm. to dislodge the incumbent. In one case, mm -hmm. the swing is uh, wait a second, is almost fifteen percent. Okay, but the incumbent is not behind, so that suggests in that instance for that for that particular constituency, you need a swing somewhere closer to seventeen percent to make that become a reality, mm -hmm. okay. right? In another instance, the swing is, let's give me a moment, yeah? Yeah, sure. Let me just get this information. Yeah, the swing is 8.29%. Not enough to overtake the incumbent. And this is in spite of the fact that the incumbent would have lost in terms of vote share compared to 2018 based upon the sample of just about, just over 16% of his vote share. Mm. All right. All right. So a lot of it is, is going to be constituency specific. Okay. Right? But by and large, if mm -hmm. there's going to be, a, and if, if there were going to be a change in government, there's going to, that is going to be realized, you need it, it double digit swings. You need double digit swings. That is clear. Okay. Fair enough. So yeah. the U United Progressive Party is ahead in how many? You name them, but just give a tally. Because I think I may have lost five. the tally. Five. So they were ahead in five. When we come back, after these mm -hmm. two messages from our partners, we, I want to ask you which or how many constituencies the incumbent is ahead right after this. 
It's now 8.50 in Antigua and Barbuda. This is Observer AM. We're continuing our conversation with uh, pollster Lindley Winter. Uh, I, I don't think he'll feel comfortable with me suggesting that he's a political analyst, which I uh, usually add as a handle for the other, the other pollster who presents on my program uh, a, 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 a bit more frequently. Uh, Mr. Winter, d d which constituencies or how many constituencies, well, which and how many constituencies is the incumbent uh, looking good or they, they're looking comfortable uh, as it stands based on your analysis over the last seven exercises? I think that's how you refer to them. Seven exercises. Right. Again, I'd say I'd list them for you. St. Mary's South, All mm -hmm. Saints West, St. John's Rural South, St. George, St. Mary's North, St. John's Rural North, and St. John's City East. Okay. What I'll tell you is that the UPP is ahead by supported by a 10% swing or more in the following. St. Mary's South, All Saints West, St. George, St. Mary's North, and St. John's City East. Now, so it means you have a 50% chance of determining which one of those two the party is ahead in, mm. or there is a tie that is left. All right? Mm. Okay. All right. Um, I, I, it's a lot of uh, data to process, um, particularly for those who may not be statistically inclined. Um, but based on your assessment, if you distill through what you've just said to me this morning, l let's say what you have found holds true when the next uh, general election is conducted, right? Based on mm -hmm. whenever the prime minister determines a call. What would your expectation be of the outcome of the next general elections? I'll, I'll say this. Mm -hmm. I think enough of us have observed the character of, of our prime minister, and we would have expected that the prime minister, if whatever information he has available to him, mm -hmm. if he was quite certain as far as the outcome being favorable to him, there would have already been an elections. I'm not saying the outcome is not favorable. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm saying is that if he was quite comfortable that the outcomes, the outcome would have been favorable. There would have already been in the elections. Okay. I think... And it suggests to me mm -hmm. that despite whatever is said publicly, and I think the prime minister deserves a lot of credit for his efforts in being able to present a case that suggests to the public that his party is solid. I'm saying despite that, it suggests to me that he has information that may indicate or that indicates things um, things may not be as rosy as he'd want it to be. Mm. All right? Mm. Now, again, this is only seven of 17 constituencies. Right. This does not include St. John's City West, uh, St. John's City South, St. John's Rural East, All Saints East and St. Luke, Barbuda, St. Philip South, and so on. All right. Mm -hmm. But if anything that may be gleaned from this is that there appears to be this a considerable swing away from the Labour Party.